अपडाउन किधर से Uh, this webinar session uh, is uh, my is the first talk, and uh, the topic is uh, we are going to uh, musculoskeletal reconstruction. As we know, uh, this is a relatively uh, new subject of diagnostic radiology, and uh, I believe uh, it's a uh, very upcoming, very promising, very enterprising. And we should embrace this radiology aspect along with our routine radiological um, uh, our routine. Uh, just to give an introduction to the ambuscular radiology, we do with this uh, high frequency probes. Uh, we do the beam scan with a low frequency probe, like in transabdominal ultrasound. We do maybe three to five megahertz, but the, as we have to scan the superficial uh, structures, soft tissue structures, or bony structures, and we need to have high frequency probes. The more the high frequency probes, the more superficial structures we scan. And we not only do this only in the diagnostic purposes, we do the therapeutic uh, aspects, we do the carry the Um, injection and intervention procedures, and I must share with you the special resolution. If the, the high resolution ultrasound is a little better than the MRI for the superficial structures. Um, the indications and the clinical applications for the endoscopic ultrasound, as we know, the diagnostic, if we go to the diagnostic aspects. Uh, we scan tendon, muscles, ligaments, joint, bursa, nerves, and many sports-related injuries. So the things which are done in superficial or body scan, body size, the like the other things, 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 like tears in muscles, we can have a look on the strain, strains, tears, contusions, masses. And we can also find the biopsy of this, uh, these structures. In joints, we can diagnose uh, affections, aspirin, then the bursa to be treated, and uh, the other tablets, etc. At uh, so the same time, uh, the intervention, as I said earlier, we can do interventions again. We can do the guided 
injection, we do the biopsy, we do the aspiration, and the very important aspect of uh, this MSK ultrasound is the treatment response, especially in rheumatoid arthritis or in the lupus. Why MSK ultrasound? Why we choose MSK ultrasound? Uh, there are certain solid reasons for that. It's a cost effective, it's readily available, and it's very convenient. Like other ultrasound modality, it's quick and simple, and very, very important aspect which I'll show in my slide is we can compare it with the other sites. The contralateral comparison is done at the same time. I'll show you in the coming slides. There's no radiation. It's a real time and dynamic and interactive. You can interact with the patient. The patient can tell you if this area helps me more. We can focus to that area much more and much more precision. And of course, it's, it is an outdoor and ops based. Um, to start with the scan, very important is the equipment. As we, I have already touched that we need to have a highly resolution, high frequency probe like 6 to 18 megahertz linear probe because we can't do it with the curvy linear with that doesn't fit on this uh, superficial surface. We do have hockey stick probes with high further high frequency and we will have the image, uh, the nerves and other structure with that. The important aspect in the MSK ultrasound is the patient positioning and patient graduation uh, around the main energy of the structure we are going to scan. Uh, this is one example of uh, this uh, we, we, we are scanning the shoulder and if we, scan, we want to scan the supraspinal distenders we should notice the anatomical attachment and we got the position of the shoulder accordingly and put the probe uh, in the same way um, the anatomical structure is. So then we are able to see the design of the tendon or bursa etc. A few words to remember in the uh, before going to the images of MSK, uh, we should know how the tendon looks like on the MSK to cell and how do ligament, nerve, or muscle look like. Normally, the tendon are hyperactive, they are hyperactive relative to the muscles because of their compactness of the tissue structure. And uh, they have fibrillary pattern, similarly, the ligaments are also hyperactive. So that means whenever you see a ligament at tender hyperactivate, either your technique is faulty or there is some pathology is payment. So this should be in your mind to start the scan. And similarly now there are links of acogenic, they show links acogenicity and the muscles are also in the same appearance. Um, these are the few things which you should remember before starting the scan. These are examples. The tendon we see, this is a tendon which is hyperactive in appearance. Hyperactive means relative to the muscle. We see the fibril pattern. This is a longitudinal section, this is palpitative appearance, and there is a transfer section with the renal appearance. Uh, this is actually the bicep tendon. Uh, similarly, the ligaments, the medial collateral ligament, and the uh, appearance is a fibril. Appearance and slightly hyper as compared to the, uh, the strong structures. The uh, muscle which show normal appearance, it's uh, muscle, muscle show heavy appearance and very on, on a leaf appearance. These are these lines run parallel to each other. This is the fatty appearance and this is a style style appearance. So you remember these things uh, before starting the ultrasound. Now, as a peculiar appearance, it has a fascicular pattern, the fascicle will unpack it to each other and we can we image the nerve at the certain level if we are imaging the medium nerve at this level it is seen as uh, a oblong uh, about appearance of the nerve. This is a very important uh, artifact which is the number uh, of the standard this is called the anisotropy. Anisotropy in the homogeneity. If the brain is not tied to this uh, scanning structure, we are able to not able to see but not able to hyperactive the tendon uh, underlying which we are focusing on. So it will look like a hyperactive structure. We have to test this by printing the probe, otherwise we are rarely going to it as a technology. So a few pathologies 
regarding the different structures, structure, tandem related pathologies, I just talked about. This is very important to where this is taken from the uh, shoulder joint, and there are uh, like seven structures usually numbered from the top to bottom, then the top is the skin, then comes the subcranial pad, the delta is muscle down there, and there is some delta bursa, then a epigenic tendon, and a cartilage which is hypoepic. Remember. You like it? Okay. And this is the tendon is hyperactive, where the cartilage is hyperactive structure, and the bone is always uh, the bone bone is hyperactive. So remember this uh, uh, some structure uh, for the weakness against skin, subcutaneous scar, delta muscle, hyperactive tendon, cartilage, and the bone. This is what we focus on when we show the drive. Uh, the logical image, the on ultrasound image, this is a longitudinal view, this is called the bird beat side. We see the heart tendon, very nice, continuous fibers, and uh, this is a transverse view, this is called the cart heel side. This is how we see the supraspinal disc tendon in the shoulder. <laughs> Uh, one of the examples of the pathology in the, in the shoulder drive, if you see the uh, uh, anatomy, we got to compare the both sides. Um, this is the right side, the, the patient who is complaining of the right side of the pain with the right shoulder drive, this is the left side. If you see the thickness of the left side, this is uh, uh, very small, the small thickness on this side, on the right side, the internal Fiber continuous. There is no break in the fiber. This is the case of the uh, supraspinal tendinosis. There are certain kind of fears we can see on the other side of the shoulder area. There are those who are on the articular surface, there are the articular surface here, those who are on the bursting surface, there are bursting surface here, and there are intrasubstantial surface here. This is, I will just show the the vertebral side, the carpal side, the shoulder, the supraspinal tendon. We see uh, there is a break in the tendon, where there is a break in the fluid, and the fluid is hyperopic. And we can see, uh, this is the articular surface, the small tear, maybe 6.8 millimeter. This is the articular surface tear of the supraspinal tendon. The other example is this side, the other the other side, the other side, the other side, and this is only the reversal surface. The other surface is fine, again, long-term section shows the fluid of here, and this was the second to eight millimeter tear in the reversal side of the tendon. This one, the pathological side, the motor side of the comparison, the left side is normal, we see the very weak side of the head, very rare, everything is fine, normal, tendon is fine, but we don't see tendon here, which is replaced by totally replaced by fluid, and the left side has sat down, that's a complete tear with retraction. So this is a full thickness tear with retraction, this is a case of a full uh, thickness tear of the supraspinal standard. One of the other uh, uh, type of injury we come across uh, is the full thickness tear of the long term biceps, and uh, this is the, uh, the muscle bed of the long term biceps after complete tear, and uh, the should have been tendon here, that has been retracted, and it's a complete rupture of the right bicep tendon here. This is called the Popeye muscle. Uh, proper eye sign as if we see the big bump of the biceps in the uh, this is the proper eye sign uh, in a complete tier of the um, biceps tendon. Similarly, uh, we have cases of uh, in the pain on the left side uh, of the elbow, which is called the lateral apical delitis. If you see the attachment uh, of the Extensive compartment muscle on the humerus. There is a slight break, slight break, and there is a fluid again. This is called 
the MS sample and is very precisely diagnosed uh, on the MS curve cell. Uh, at the same time, uh, the, the golfer animal, uh, which is also called the uh, medial animal on the line curves, uh, this is uh, the normal side, but there is the development of the attachment of uh, the plexus compartment to the humerus, and the fluid is not here. This is to the medial epicondylitis. Actually, standing patient presenting with the pain, standing after playing the, the squash, and uh, you see the normal side of this. This is the calcaneum. We see the attachment of the actually standing with normal thickness, but on the this side, there is disruption of fibers of the HD standard. There is a fluid here. This is the complete tear uh, of the HD standard on the left side as compared to the right side, which was the normal tubular pattern of the tendon. Some of the intermediate pathologies uh, this is a case of weak of the intimus and writers in which uh, adductor policy is longer and extensive policy is various. They, they become and the stress on the vertebral trauma and the sphora, the cerebral and skin, patient is unable to do work with his hand. This is the right side, tears on the right earth. If we compare on the, the left side, this is 2.6 millimeter, which is normal, whereas on the pathological side, this is 5.5 millimeter. This is the uh, tears on the right earth. Uh, which is very well known as a deep veins, tears on the right earth, and this can be treated. Uh, it will go in the ground state by the steroid injection. Acute tears on the one of the very recent cases, uh, patient presented with uh, unable to move the wrist and sphere pain in the palm. There is a scan, there is the gross cerebral thickening around the flexor compartment of the wrist and the palmar compartment are showing the fluid and cerebral thickening. And this, this was a case of uh, acute tumor cyanovitis and uh, similarly in the case of acute tumor cyanovitis and up here the doctor plays a role. We see uh, flow in the acute tumor cyanovitis uh, that uh, augment the diagnosis uh, for the pathology. Uh, a few grand pathologies we can see at this time, starting from the ectopic medical drive, we come across all the, the people, doctors, and the best workers. They have strain on the ectopic medical drive. They have often complained of the shoulder pain, but sometimes not the shoulder, it's the AC joint, which undergoes degenerative changes with the passage of time, and the joint is distorted with osteoporotic formation. This is echo. Uh, this is a degenerative uh, ectopic lateral joint. It's very precisely, very clearly part of the muscular And this is uh, one of the cases of the acute inflammatory changes as AC joint. Uh, and uh, here, uh, this is the uh, problem of tolerance and the of the heart. You see the erosive changes, the bone eroded. The cerebral thickness is one of the cases of the rheumatoid arthritis uh, with the erosive changes, which are very early picked uh, on ultrasound rather than actually in other modalities. Elbow uh, diameter here, yes, this is one of the cases so we have a few hands of humors, and uh, this is elbow diameter, this is on the issue too here, this is the pain. Um, after some intervention, and there is a good collection which is in the form of pus, which is internal in pus and are aspirated. This is one of the cases where we see uh, the, uh, the collection of the elbow joints. The joint of fluid, we come across daily. Uh, uh, we see fluid is manifested by fluid in the versa. It's very nice to see we can aspirate and have strong guidance if needed. Uh, it's a needed neonatal hip. Patient com parents complaining that the baby is not moving the uh, leg properly. When we scan, uh, we see this is the bone there. The other half emerges. We see fluid collection here, non ossified apophysis, and collection here. This is the fluid collection. It was external in positive aspiration. And 
Some of the nerve uh, is the most common nerve, uh, which uh, the patient can play in the middle nerve, in the carpal syndrome. We see on the, at the level of the wrist, we see the normal cross sexual image, and the longitudinal image of the, uh, the nerve. In the, the normal value is less than 0.09 centimeters square, and this is a normal case, but this one, if you see, this is 0.22 centimeters square. This is smaller, this is thicker, and even in the long visual section, this is the case of the carotid syndrome. So, the ligaments we see on the ultrasound, the video platform ligament I showed you now, I don't know if you see, uh, this is pinna, this is the uh, tibia, the video platform ligament you see up here is normal, but you see the pool along each side, the very subtle finding. This is this was the case of the partial period of the middle collateral ligament. 
this time, yes, the sensitivity of diabetes in the sky is much more higher in MR, but uh, we can um, see, we can have good look on the sky. Um, uh, this is a degenerated tear bulging of the medial meniscus and uh, it is uh, pushing the um, uh, the metacarpal ligament. Uh, actually, this is this is the total medial meniscus uh, which is seen on the upper side. Similarly, this is the lateral meniscus. If you see it in the cleft, in the triangle, is the meniscus. If you see a cleft inside the meniscus, this was uh, the tear of the the lateral horn of the meniscus, the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. This is the medial meniscus, which is absolutely normal, the triangular figure, and on this side, the material in the lateral meniscus, the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus. Those we can pick in a big, very hairline fractures in reachable areas. This was one of the cases. If you have a call, uh, we are unable to see anything on X-ray. The patient has shoulder pain, but what when we did the endoscopes on the depressed fraction of the humerus. So, in the some fractures can be picked down uh, these uh, ultrasound scanning. Right? Yes, in many cases, when a uh, patient complains of trauma to the AFH, we don't take fractures on the X-ray, but I tell you, this is one example of the rib fractures. We see uh, the, the broken end, the small hematoma. So you, you will very confidently see the fracture on the top. Mm -hmm. uh, the very important aspect of the NSP is the intra-articular and infections. And as uh, you know, the, the, the R of good and some guided injection therapies to place appropriate amount of appropriate drug at the appropriate time into the exact site of affected tissue.